Welcome back to another video and welcome to the first ever Patreon only episode. Today I want to show you a little game I've been working on called Do Not Press OK. Now on the surface this game looks really really simple. You don't press anything, the score goes up. And when you give it up, you just type in your name and then press OK. At which point you'll be added to the leaderboard on the right. Now you notice there's a bit of a delay between me pressing OK and adding to the leaderboard. And this is not because my code's quite sloppy, it's actually how I'm displaying this leaderboard. You see, if we close this, and if we go over to this Google Sheet here, we'll see that we've actually got a Google Sheet with all the scores on. So what this code's doing is actually pulling this Google Sheet data from the start, displaying it in our leaderboard on the right-hand side, and then when we're ready to submit our score and press OK, it will send it off, add the new row, and it will sort the data back into the new order. So you can see my score of 800 has now been added. Now, you might be thinking, does this work because I own the Google Sheet? This will actually work for anybody who uses your code. So if you submit this to the Construct Arcade, everybody who uses the Construct Arcade will be able to see this live scoreboard and will be able to add to it as well. So let's look how we can do this ourselves. So before I begin a new Google Sheet, here is just our last Google Sheet. So we can see that we've got Riley2 just been added. The first column is the score. I did this originally because I was sorting with Construct and Construct like sorting on the first column. Actually, now the way I'm doing it is sorting through app script, which we'll talk about in just a second, which means this could be anywhere. So you don't need to have the score first, but I've got the score, person's name, the difficulty they choose, and the date when they submitted. And again, this can be done with any number of columns. So if you want less columns, more columns, you can do that as well. So first thing you need to do to get started is you need a Google Sheet. You can give this a name, but it actually doesn't matter what the name of the Google Sheet is. And then what I recommend is putting in one row of data. Again, you can delete this data later on, but just one row to start off with. So for instance, if I want to put a score in, I'd put 500, then I could put the person's name, then I could put their difficulty, and then I can just put a rough date of 9th of the 9th, 23. Now, again, it doesn't matter what you pick, you can choose exactly what stuff you want to show. So if you don't want to actually show the difficulty or if you want to add additional options, such as how many lives they had left or anything like that, you can also do that as well. So once you've got this data in, we can now go into the app scripting part. So to do this, we go to extensions and then app script. So when app script finally loads, this will look like. Now, one of the big issues that I had was an issue where it would get to this page, it kept saying too many redirects. If you get that, one of the easiest things you can do is open this up on incognito window it's a Google bug with having multiple accounts synced to Google Chrome. I hope they're fixing it soon. It's very, very annoying. Um, but I'm just running it incognito instead, and that seems to fix the problem. So once you get to this stage, this is where you can start coding with basically JavaScript. However, I've done the JavaScript coding for you. So you'll find in the sort of folder where everything counts is, this code here. You can press Control A to select everything, Control C to copy, and then just bring it into this area here. So let's talk about some of this code. I'm not going to talk about it in too much detail because some of it I don't completely understand. So again, these links here if you want to find out a little bit more. And again, big thank you for the community for working this all out. If we start at the top, we've basically just got some simple calls that get the current sheet that we're working on. Now, if you've got multiple sheets, you might want to change this sheet one, sheet two. But I imagine if you're doing something like this, you're just going to have one sheet open to hold all your data. Now, later on is where we get to the bit that's a bit more interesting because where you get to customize how this looks and what sort of properties you're getting. So one of the first things that we're doing is getting the next row. So this takes the last row and adds one to it. So when we get a new bit of data, we're just adding it below the previous row of data. Then this is where we're actually adding data. So we've got sheet get range, next row, and then one, one being the first column. Unlike when you look at other programming, especially Construct, where we start from zero, spreadsheets do start from one. So column one is actually the first column. It's not column zero. So column one is the first one. Set value, E parameter, score. Now this score is really important because whatever text we write here, we need to write in Construct. And I'll show you how we do that in Construct in just a bit. So score, name, and difficulty. It doesn't matter what we call these, but again, we must make sure they're written the same. You can see that we're adding this to one, two, and three. And if we want to add more, we could just copy and paste this line of code underneath. And we can come up with a new property 
say like, oh, how much health did you have at the end? Or if you're doing an RPG, how much gold has the player got? So you can see a global leaderboard of who's got the most money. And again, which column he's able to get to. So instead of column three, we'll save it to column four example. So I'm just gonna hide that away. The other thing that we've got, which is done automatically, is actually storing the dates. This is something that you don't need, you can get rid of, but I quite like it as a feature to know actually when was this data submitted. So this goes into column four, and it's gonna submit in a value from construct, which is what this e dot parameter is doing. We're just submitting the date, whatever the date was when this code was run. Now, the final thing that we do is actually sort the data. So we sort on the column first, so I'm sorting on column one. So this would be my score column. And then false indicates if you want it ascending or descending. So false is descending, so it would be the highest score first. If you want it ascending, then you'd put true. And then we've just got some error checking on was this successful or not. So that's the code. Now to get this working, we do need to do a couple more steps. So the first thing I'm going to do is first save this project, and then we're gonna run it for the first time. Now, once you've run it for around about 30 seconds, you might start seeing this message pop up. This only happens the first time that you run it, and it's where we can set up our permissions. So go review permissions, sign into the account that you're using, and then you get this big sort of Google hasn't verified this app warning. Now, this is because you're running a custom script that Google doesn't like. It doesn't like it because it's a custom script. That's literally all it is. So all you need to do is go down to advance and then go to entitled project, unsafe or whatever you've called your app script, and then just press okay. And then just press allow. Again, you only have to do this the first time that you run it. And if all's gone well, you'll see execute started, execution complete. So now what we can do is we can actually deploy this. New deployment. We're gonna select the type, click on the cog, and do it as a web app. You don't actually need to give this a description, but the big thing is who's got access. We need to go to anybody. If you don't do this, then your leaderboard only works for you. And we want it to work for everybody. So hit deploy. Now, when you do deployment, it will ask for authorized access again. This is again for the first time you're deploying. After that, it works fine. So for the first time, just hit authorize and just the same steps as before. Again, it'll give you a big error because it is a custom script. So just do continue and then allow. And that's it. Your code is now being deployed, which means that at any point, if anybody tries to access this app script using this custom URL, then they'll run the code in the background. And that's what we want to do for Construct. We want Construct to be able to run this custom URL to be able to put data into this spreadsheet for us. So we actually need to copy this now and hit copy. If for whatever reason that you forget to copy that and you need to go back to it, just do deploy, manage deployment, and then you'll see that come up and you can copy it from there instead. So it's not lost, you can still get it. So coming into Construct now, this is the project that we've got here. And the big thing we're gonna start with is sending data. And then we'll look at how we view the leaderboard because that works slightly differently. So the first thing you'll see is this local string web app URL. That's where we're gonna copy this new URL that we've just made. So I'm just gonna paste that in there and hit okay. So what happens when we hit the send button? So we've got a couple of boxes here. We've got the name box, the score box, the difficulty and the okay button. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're gonna take the string S and we're gonna sell it to web URL plus a question mark. We're essentially setting up a custom string that has all the requirements that we need to run our bit of code. The next thing that we need to do is actually start putting in our values. So this is gonna be S and score equals, and then the score. Now this word score here matches our app script score that we put here. So these need to be spelled exactly the same any capital letters also need to be on both sides. Then we repeat for any additional properties. The only difference when we add additional properties is they need to have an and sign at the start here. And this is actually inside of our string. So and name equals, and again, name spelled exactly the same as the app script one. I'm getting that from the name.txt. And then difficulty, difficulty.txt. Now it actually doesn't matter if these are not in the same order as what they are in the app script. Because the app script is looking for the names, not the order. So you can put them in any order you want. Obviously, logically, put them in the same order they are here. 
if that helps you out, it makes a lot more sense. Um, but if there's a reason that you need to get this in a different order, you can. You also don't need to send all parameters through. So if you don't want to send the difficulty through, it will just default at zero. The date we also don't need to send through because it's handling automatically for us. Finally, we're using Ajax and we're using a special thing called post to URL. So the tag doesn't matter. It's just a way that we can check. So I'm using that tag later on just to check has the send complete, but this could easily just be an empty tag like it is normally. I'll leave that back to send. The URL is gonna be that custom string of S that has got the web app URL. It's got the score in it. It's got the name in it. It's got the difficulty in. The data, weirdly enough, is just empty. We don't need that because it's all handled with this URL. It's a weird method of doing it, but it works. And then the method that we're using is called get, even though we're posting. Um, again, a little bit confusing, but if you keep these settings the same, it works. Now, one more thing I should say about this sending before we carry on with how we actually view the leaderboard is there is a small limit of how many characters that you can send. And when I say a small limit, you are looking at a large number of characters, but if for whatever reason the user enters something quite large and it doesn't send, then that would be the reason why. I'm then just using Ajax on send complete. So it just checks when this is completed. And all I'm doing is setting the okay button to send. Wait in a second, putting it back to okay. Setting the score back to zero, setting the text to score back to whatever the new score is, which is zero, and then the name back to blank. So this is just a reset, nothing actually exciting here. Um, and then at the bottom as well, just adding the score by 100 every second. So that is it, that is it for send. Obviously the difficult bit here is setting up the app scripts. But again, all this code is available in the Google Drive and you can customize it how you want and then it'll put it into the spreadsheet. Now, sometimes when you run the code for the first time, it will actually run it. And because it's not getting any data but the date, it'll just put a random date in it. Just press delete on that one. So you might need to check it when you run it for the first time, but obviously once it's set up, it will run automatically by itself. Now, in terms of viewing the leaderboard, we do actually need to install a plugin. Now you can do this without the plugin, it makes life a million times harder and it's one of the best plugins ever. So to add a plugin, you just go view, add on manager, and then you're installing this CSV to array plugin. Now you'll find this also in the folder where you found this project and the app script code. And all this is doing is taking a CSV file and turn it into the array object. And again, we're dealing with CSVs we prefer to deal with arrays inside of Construct. So really, really useful, simple plugin. Obviously, once you install the plugin, restart, and then you can go back on this project. So once we've got that done, how do we get started? Well, the first thing that we need is the sheet code. Now, this looks like some random nonsense. It's really easy to get a hold of the sheet code. So what I'm gonna do is go to the sheet that we've got. And at the top here, you'll see that we've got the URL and after where we've got the slash D, we're gonna copy that code over and then we're gonna stop at the queue. So we're gonna copy that like so. Come to our sheet codes and paste it in and press okay. And then one thing you need to do when you've got the sort of code at the top copied is just make sure you hit share, save it if you haven't, and just make sure you've got it set to anybody with a link. If you don't have this, it'll be restricted when we try and access it for a construct, it just won't show up. So just make sure you've done this step here. In terms of what happens next, we're then using Ajax to request a URL. So this is HTTPS docs.google spreadsheet, and then it's using the sheet code that we've provided. And then we've got some different things of how we're outputting it and what sheets we're getting. And again, all that's set up, you just need to put in the sheet codes because that's gonna be different per person. We're then going to use this CSV to array function. So this can take in the Ajax last data, so the data it's just got from the URL, and it's going to put into array. And we just need to change the mapping to row to Y, column to X. And that means it's in the exact same format as it is in the CSV. If you do it the other way around, then the data will be going down the ways, not across the ways. And then what Z index do you want this on? Obviously the default is zero. If you've got multiple sheets that you want to get from, you might want different Z indexes for those. And then that is pretty much it. We've now got an array, so it's in a nice format, and then we choose how we want to get the information out of that array. Now, the way that I'm doing it, to keep it nice and simple, on the Ajax complete, I've just got a sub-event that just repeats for the number of records, so array.height. And then I'm using the leaderboard function, which I set the text to blank to clear it, and then all I'm doing is just appending it now. So I'm doing array at position one first. So that is actually the name. So 
Again, when we talk about spreadsheets versus construct, column one in construct is this column here. This is column zero. However, for a spreadsheet, when you're dealing with app script, this is column one, this is column two, column three, column four. So just remember to start from zero or one. So when we're dealing with, so when we're dealing with our array at one, we're actually dealing with the second value, which is the name. Then I'm getting the first value, which is the score, so name score, then the difficulty, and then the date. And then I'm adding a new line at the end, so the next one goes onto a new line. And that is it to get our code working. So if we test, we see that our name comes up on the leaderboard. We can now enter a new name. So we'll go for Riley2. We'll make sure we get a higher score. Press OK. And then our new one's added. And then I'm going to quickly get myself in between the two scores for one more go. And we can see once again, our score goes in the middle. Actually slightly slower on that one. So 500, 500, 800. Again, really, really useful program. I just want to show you a couple of last things just before we end off this video. So first of all, I'm triggering the viewing of the code by either startup layout or on send complete. You might want to trigger this with a function instead or for different reasons. But again, all it is is just these lines of code here. Finally, if you don't want to show all the names on the leaderboard, because again, if you've got a big leaderboard, that can get quite large. You can just change this to say three and it will show the top three results. So that is another method you could do as well. The only thing you want to be careful of with this, if you haven't got free records yet, that might cause some issues. So creating free dummy records is an easy way around this. Or you can just do some checks to see if the array height is greater than three, then repeat three times. If it's not, then repeat for the array height. So that's another way you can get around this. But this could be available on the link provided. Give it a go, see how you get on. And if there's any issues at all, drop me an email or drop me a message through Patreon. I'll be happy to help you debug this code. But that's it for today. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.